Hey folks, this is Ranker with a Diablo 4 Season 3 class tier list video. If you're wondering what class to play this season, this video should help you out. In Season 3, we're getting hit with some significant balance changes. A lot of the top builds got nerfed, bugs got fixed, bringing down their power, and a lot of other builds got buffed. We're losing the Season 2 powers, but we're gaining a companion as part of the Season 3 theme, which we'll be able to customize to buff us in different ways depending on our build or even do its own damage. The companion should prove to be a significant source of power, so I think overall compared to Season 2, I think the average power of a given build will either stay the same or even rise uh, again compared to what Season 2 powers were giving us. Now Diablo 4 doesn't have any test servers, so none of us have tried out the new companion powers, we haven't tried out the new balance patch, so this is just going to be best guesses based on the patch notes. But if, for instance, there's some new bug that comes up that makes something absolutely broken, I mean, there's no way for us to predict that. Now, what exactly will this tier list be measuring? It's not about which class has the strongest build. That's a part of it, but it's not entirely that. We'll have a separate video on the best builds once the season gets underway and we can actually test out the builds. This tier list is based on what is the safest class that you can go with to ensure that you have a fun season three. So we're looking at the 1 to 50 early leveling experience. We're looking at the 50 plus mid game experience. We're looking at the end game experience. We're looking at the speed farming experience. And we're looking at how many viable, powerful build options each class has in all of these aspects. I also give different weights to different parts of the game. For instance, the 1 to 50, I weigh that less than the other parts because you're spending the least amount of time there but I'm still including it. Some people say, why even bother? Well, because for some people, it takes them longer to do 1 to 50. Some people give up. Maybe they pick a class that has a bad 1 to 50 experience. They get to level 40, they're not having a good time, and they quit the season entirely. So for them, that was the entirety of their season. So just keep in mind, as I'm going through each class and I'm talking through the builds, the class's strengths, weaknesses, and different aspects, keep in mind what maybe your area of focus is, what part of the game is more significant to you, and that could help guide your choice as well. Now, as we move into the tier list, the first thing you'll note, we actually have no classes beneath B tier which is great. Last season, I had Barbarian down in D tier. That's because we didn't know how strong the Overpower rework was gonna be. And uh, yeah, it, it turned out to be Overpowered. But now overall balance is looking to be a lot better. Classes are a lot closer, so because we have half this tier list being empty, we can zoop, slide it over here, make more room for a gameplay video. So, starting with the B tier, let's talk about the biggest fall from grace, the Rogue. I had Rogue in S tier last season, the best class. And honestly, if not for the bugs that allowed Hammer of the Ancients Barbarian, uh, plus the overpowered overpower, uh, and the bugs that made the Ball Lightning Sorcerer the two top builds of the season, I think Rogue still would have been the best class of season two. Now, in fairness, Rogue did also get its own broken combination in season two with uh, the interaction with combo points and Thibaut's will giving you an insane number of combo points above what the game intended. That was clearly a bug. That bug has been fixed. So that broken build is also going away. But the big reason for the fall from grace for Rogue is the nerf to Twisting Blades, which is a shame. Twisting Blades has been strong from the start. Um, I would have actually like to use Twisting Blades as the ideal power level for all builds in the game. It was very strong, but in my opinion at least, not overpowered. I would have liked to see Twisting Blades left alone and all builds in the game brought up to be on par with Twisting Blades. But we are seeing a nerf to Twisting Blades. Uh, the blades can now only hit twice instead of three times. Visually it looks like they can hit twice, but in practice they were hitting three times, so you can argue they're fixing a bug there. But it, Functionally, that is a nerf to Twisting Blades. That plus the Close Quarters Combat Key Passive got a massive nerf. This is really hurting melee rogues. We're also seeing nerfs to Poison Rogues. Poison had emerged as the dominant element of Imbue and, and the synergy for the rogue in Season 2. That's getting some major nerfs. Now to compensate, we are seeing many, 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 many buffs to ranged rogue build. So if you're gonna go rogue this season, ranged is likely the way to go now. To be clear, Twisting Blades isn't nerfed into the ground, it's not completely in the gutter, but it's no longer gonna be one of the most powerful builds in the game. 
for speed content, it's still great. For leveling, it's still one of the best leveling builds. But for like pushing nightmare dungeons, oof. It might be one of the best options for rogue. It's probably going to be beat out by a ranged rogue. But rogue is starting to hurt now when it comes to pushing the most challenging content in the game. Rogue is also a very skill dependent class. Twisting Blades formerly was so strong that even if you played it kind of on dummy mode, not super paying attention to things, it was still very strong. But now that it's been nerfed, overall the combos that you want to pull off with Rogue, especially the synergies that we're seeing with the, the new items buffing the, the power of ranged rogues in different ways, it's going to be a lot more dependent on rotations and using the correct skills at the correct time. If you're just going to spam skills, you're going to have a bad time on a rogue when you're pushing nightmare dungeons because you are going to be rewarded instead for clicking the correct skill in the correct sequence at the correct time. Again, though, for leveling, rogue remains one of the strongest classes. It's going to have a very smooth 1 to 50 experience. And if you... If all you really care about is just doing overworld content, you don't want to push Nightmare Dungeons. Every class has multiple viable builds now for just destroying hell tides and bounties and world bosses and everything. If I do make a rogue this season, I'm going to make a penetrating shot rogue. All right, next we'll talk about the sorcerer. Now, we actually had the sorcerer in B tier last season as well. Again, that was before the <laughs> absurd broken ball lightning sorcerer was discovered. Ball Lightning is being fixed, is being nerfed. So overall, Sorcerer now will remain in B tier. It's a little uncertain just how nerfed Ball Lightning is. I predict it's no longer going to be the best Sorcerer build. We're seeing big buffs to Meteor for Sorcerer. That's looking like it has the potential to become the new best Sorcerer build. But it's unlikely to reach anywhere close to those broken levels of Ball Lightning. Sorcerer remains a really strong class for leveling 1 to 50. Very fast, smooth experience. It's a little glass cannony, but uh, again, very good leveling experience. You got chain lightning as an option. You got firewall as an option. For speed farming overworld content, you can go pretty much any element. You can get a build that's going to crush that content quickly and easily. We're likely going to see lightning spear worked into more builds as a, a new source to add vulnerable. Sorks always had a little difficulty applying vulnerable. They were very reliant on frost nova. Now lightning spear will apply vulnerable on crit. But once it comes to pushing high Nightmare Dungeons, I think Sorcerer's going to start to struggle again without Ball Lightning. All right, on to the A tier. Let's go with the Necromancer. Now, 1 to 50, Necromancer has what is most likely the singular best leveling build, 1 to 50, in the game. Blood Surge is so strong for leveling 1 to 50. While Necromancers are arguably the slowest class when it comes to just movement, they have really no mobility options, especially at low level. Their Blood Surge does so much area damage that its clearing speed makes up for its lack of move speed. As long as you're doing efficient activities and not spending a lot of time with very low density areas where you're spending a lot of time walking, then Blood Surge is extremely efficient for 1 to 50 leveling. That said, again, what we said was what's important is to have multiple builds available for each activity. So. Uh, taking a few points off of Necro for leveling, I wouldn't say it's the best leveling class just because I don't think having a singular option to go with for leveling being the best makes it the best class. But again, if for you, it doesn't matter. If you don't care about having to follow the one build from 1 to 50, being funneled into that, then Necro would be your best bet for the 1 to 50. Now, one thing worth noting for the Necromancer, if you used to run the Infinimist build, this build is weaker this season. You see, a lot of Infinimus power relied on triggering lucky hits. And the lucky hit chance of Corpse Explosion got a significant nerf this patch, going from 40%, which is almost half the time, down to 25%. Overall, for Necro, it looks like we're moving back towards Bone Spear as being the dominant build. It's, it's pretty good for leveling 1 to 50. Still would recommend starting with Blood Surge, even if you want to go Bone Spear Necro. But after that, 50 plus, Bone Spear is going to be one of the best, if not the best, Necromancer build in the game. Now, just to clarify, you can still run Infinimist Necro. The build isn't completely dead, but it is weaker than it was before. For me, the wild card for Necro is Bone Spirit. Now, Bone Spirit's getting a lot of love this patch. It's getting new supporting items. It's getting buffs. 
I'm hoping that Bone Spirit surprises us. I'm I'm actually thinking of starting Necromancer in season three. I'm gonna start with Blood Surge, level to 50, then transition into either Bone Spirit or Bone Spirit. Off the bat, Bone Spirit is looking to be stronger, but it's possible that Bone Spirit works out to be the top Necro build, and I I just crossing my fingers for that. The Necro is getting the new Shattered Spirit aspect, which makes Bone Spirit launch 18 Bone Splinters in all directions, dealing 400% increased damage and generating 6 essence per enemy hit. So, to me, this sounds like it's capturing the fantasy of a... <laughs> back in the Diablo 2 days, a Frozen Orb Sorceress. You launch your Frozen Orb, and all those shards come flying off of it, and it sounds like that's kind of what's happening with Bone Spirit. You launch your Bone Spirit, and all these Bone Splinters come shooting out of it. At 6 Essence per enemy hit, you start spamming that into a high density amount of enemies, and that could potentially be performing really well at high level. Now we are seeing Summoner Necro get some buffs. I don't believe it's anywhere near enough to move Summoner Necro up. Can you run a Summoner Necro? Yes. Is it going to perform anywhere on the same level as the top Necro builds? No. Alright, now on to the Druid. So, for the Druid... Good news and bad news. Bad news is Druid remains the weakest class for leveling 1 to 50. You're going to have the slowest, most difficult time getting through that part of your journey. If you're looking to get to 50 as fast as possible to get to the, the endgame content, Druid is not the class to pick. However, for endgame, Druid is looking to be one of the most powerful classes of Season 3. Now, the aspect of the Blurred Beast, that got a heavy nerf. That's really hurting the Poison Tread build. But the Lightning Storm build is going to get a significant buff thanks to a new unique item. If I do make a Druid this season, I'm probably going to want to build towards Lightning Storm. We're also seeing in the patch notes a lot of support being given to werewolf builds, rabies, lacerate. I'm not sure it's going to be quite enough to make a, a top build out of it, but at least we're, we're getting some more options here. Now, I don't expect Pulverize to actually be among the absolute best Druid builds this season. It remains a strong option for sure, but as a consequence to overpower getting a significant nerf, its, it's damage is getting cut in half mostly to address barbarians, uh, Druid's a casualty of this. Pulverize makes a lot of use of overpower damage, so it's knocked it down a peg. Pulverize will still be good enough, though, to destroy all overworld content. It's just that when you're going to be pushing those Nightmare Dungeons and going higher up there, it's going to fall behind. Werewolf Tornado, and now again Lightning Storm, those are probably going to be the tops. All right, and that takes us up into the S tier, the... Barbarian. Barbarian is looking excellent this season. Now, is it the best at leveling 1 to 50? No. It's not terrible. <laughs> it's not It's not as bad as the Druid. You got a few different leveling options that you can go with that are decent enough. Double Swing is becoming a fan favorite for a lot of people, but Upheaval, Hammer of the Ancients, still good options. And then when we're looking at endgame, 50 plus, from 50 to 100, at 100, no matter what you're doing, Barbarian has the greatest number of viable, very strong builds to select from. Hammer of the Ancients was the build to go with last season. That's been nerfed. Again, cutting overpower damage in half has significantly hurt Barbarians, but it hasn't crippled them by any means. What's arguably hurt the Hoda Barb more was fixing some bugs that were associated with it. But even despite all of that, Hammer of the Ancients is still looking to be possibly the strongest Barbarian build in the game. So if you really enjoyed Hammer of the Ancients last season and you want to go Hammer of the Ancients again, it's still a good option to pick. You're going to feel the power difference, you're going to be weaker, but you're still going to destroy things. But we're seeing the Rend Barbarian actually rising up. It's getting some significant buffs. Definitely a build to look out for. Meanwhile, the Charge Barb, that's rocketing up as well because they've moved a lot of Charge's power off of legendary aspects and onto the base skill. The base skill now deals 10 times more damage than it previously did. It's not clear how well charge is going to perform when you're like pushing the really high nightmare dungeons, but for overworld content, I think charge is going to be a really fun build and be able to clear hell tides really easily. But yeah, for endgame barbarian, apart from Hammer of the Ancients, you can go 
upheaval. You can go double swing. You can go now rend probably. Walking Arsenal Barb, also an option. Then add in Whirlwind for doing Helltides. You really have the greatest number of powerful builds to select from as a Barbarian. The other great thing about Barbarian is you are no longer going to need to rely on the three shout meta. Because they've made some changes, and, and I think this is actually going to work, to finally break up that, that stale Barb meta that we've had from launch. Where, without nerfing anything which is the impressive thing, you're no longer being rewarded or funneled towards stacking a bunch of shouts on your bar. You now are able to maintain the different buffs that you previously got from needing to, stay to take all of these shouts. That's being moved onto things now where you're able to get the same benefit, but with fewer shouts on your bar. That's the skinny of it. We've had videos talking about the full patch notes and the dev stream and the uh, initial season reveal that we've gone through over the past week. So if you want nitty gritty details, you can go through those videos. In short, this is probably the best season to be a Barbarian. I just came off playing a Hammer of the Ancients Barbarian in Season 2, so I'm not eager to jump right back into it. I'm very intrigued by the Charge Barb, however, so I think my current plan right now is I'm going to start with a Necromancer for a, a really smooth 1-50 to 50 and getting an endgame character ready. I'm going to farm up a bunch of stuff, and then I'm going to make a Barbarian as my second character. I'm going to use all the gold and everything materials that I farmed on my Necromancer to help smooth out the 1-50 to 50 for the Barbarian. And then I really want to try out the Charge Barb. But if Bone Spirit turns out to be really good, I might end up just sticking on Necromancer altogether. So, those are my thoughts, folks, but I turn the question to you. What are your predictions for the best classes to go with in Season 3? Sound off in the comments. Also, stay tuned for more Diablo 4 Season 3 guides. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. And subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.